Welcome back to Journey to Indominus. I'll be your host, Dana Howell, and today I'm going to show you how I painted my Necron Warriors from the new 40k starter sets. The Necrons are an ancient species of aliens who made a deal with an even ancienter space god in order to attain immortality. They've been asleep for a very, very, very long time and have slowly started to wake up from their slumber in living metal bodies. If this sounds familiar to you, it's because it's a pastiche of several 80s and 90s sci-fi tropes all bundled up into the elegant metal form of a Terminator. The other kind of Terminator. That kind of Terminator. In my color scheme, I wanted to evoke some of the feelings of the Terminator from that original movie, but set it in a more neon cyberpunk future, inspired by the photographs of Liam Wong and movies like Blade Runner. For these models, I'm imagining that it's raining, we're in an alleyway, there's sort of neon signs everywhere, and these ancient living metal assassins are stalking our protagonist. And that's the mood that we're going to be trying to achieve in our color scheme. After a number of failed prototypes, I spent an entire night listening to Synthwave and looking at pictures of cyberpunk movies. And when I emerged from this fugue at about 2 a.m. in the morning, I had come up with this test model, which I was pretty happy with. I am not entirely sure how I arrived at this model because when I'm making test models, I don't take detailed notes. It is just a very organic process for me. So in this video, we're going to attempt to take this test model and reverse engineer it to create a process that can be replicated over and over again to create an entire force of these models. We're gonna start out with a model that has already been assembled and based. If you wanna see exactly how we achieved this, you can take a look at last week's video where I went in depth on how I created bases like this. As we're going to be using color changing paints in this tutorial, we're gonna to wanna to start with a gloss black prime. After experimenting quite a bit, and after reading this over and over again on the internet, I found that gloss black is the best prime to use underneath a color changing paint to get a really vibrant, full looking coat. If you don't have a gloss black primer, you could always use a regular black primer and then some gloss varnish. I'm using an airbrush here, but you could always use a spray can to get the same results. After our prime is complete, we're going to give the model a spray just from above, kind of like as if we were zenithaling the model with Vallejo Light Violet Green. This is going to help to just catch the raised areas of the, the model with our metallic color and leave the underside still a dark black color. Again, if you don't have an airbrush, you could always just use a dry brush to apply this. And if you don't have a color changing paint, I think it would look basically just as good to dry brush on an oily silver color, something like the options I have on screen right now. Once that's done, we're going to give the model a quick spray of Vallejo Violet Old Copper from slightly beneath the model and a little bit more on the gun arm side of the model. This adds a little bit of variation to the metallics and gives the metal on this side a sort of coral pink sheen that sometimes will reflect a little bit of the violet in its namesake. After that, we're going to just hit the model a little bit from above and on the non-gun arm side with Vallejo Turquoise Violet. The main color here is a metallic turquoise, which is going to help contrast the metallic coral very well. And in a certain light, again, it's going to have those violet hues, which are going to match up with the violet hues in the other color changing paint. The goal here is to get a two-tone kind of look where each side of the model is going to reflect a slightly different metallic look. I've been experimenting a lot lately with these color changing paints and I find that they can create some really interesting looks when you don't just apply one of them, but when you combine a few of them to create mini highlights of different colors on the model. Once again, if you don't have an airbrush, almost all of these steps will work just fine with a nice soft dry brush of these colors. Or if you don't have color changing paints, you can always mix a little bit of pink or blue into a straight silver metallic color to get a similar effect. As our final step with our airbrush, we're going to highlight a few parts of the model with Kiriath's hair pink. 
If you haven't yet stolen a lock of Kiryoth's hair while he's sleeping in order to synthesize a pink ink for use with your miniatures, you could always use Dalarani fluorescent pink ink as well as it's a very similar color. Throughout this tutorial, we're going to be using Kiryoth's hair ink in order to create our Necron glow color. If you wanted to, you could always use that new green ink that GW put out and substitute that in if you wanted a more traditional green Necron look. So this is going to be our glow color. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of this paint wherever this color is going to be reflected off the model. The main light source for our pink is going to be the gun barrel and the hose attached to it, as well as the eye sockets and a little bit of the rib cage. So we're going to start by laying down a fairly thin coat of this on the base where the light would be reflected from the gun and the gun hose. My concept here is that these streets are covered in rain and they're quite slick, so they're going to be reflecting a lot of this light backwards. We are then going to carefully highlight a little bit of the gun itself, as well as the hose attached to the gun. And then we're going to highlight a little bit of the model's eye sockets and little parts around the rib cage. Once all that's done, we're going to unplug our airbrush and move to our desk. Our next step is going to be painting some parts of the model with a copper metallic color so that the entire model doesn't look too monochromatic. On some of my early drafts for this color scheme, I didn't have this contrasting metal color and it ended up looking a little bit boring. So while it would make more sense for Necrons that are stalking through the streets and trying to stay a little bit quiet to be mostly painted in a dark metallic color, they just don't look as good at the tabletop without a more contrasting copper color. If you don't have a copper color, I think a gold would also look pretty good as a contrast color. We're going to use this copper color to paint all of the parts of the interior skeleton on the Necron as well as the main shoulder plates and the box part on the gun. After it's dry, we're going to use a brown wash to deepen the shadows and dull the metallic a little bit to help it from being too bright and overpowering. We might also use this to create darker shadows on other parts of the model. There's no need to use a second color of ink. We can just use this as our shadow color for everything. Next, we're going to paint all of the glowing parts on the model with a white paint. I'm using Liquitex white ink here as it tends to flow well and I don't have to thin it down, but you could use any white paint you might have on hand that you like to use. With this, we're going to be painting all the parts of the model which will have the strongest glow, such as the balls along the gun, the hose with the glowing stuff on the gun, the eye sockets, the slits on the rib cage, and anywhere else you might want the model to have a slight glowing effect. Halfway through this process, I want you to remember that you forgot to <laughs> drill out your gun barrels and that people on the internet will never let you forget it if you don't drill out your gun barrels. So you're gonna wanna go get your miniature pin vise drill and carefully drill out the gun barrels without getting too many fingerprints on the model. After that, we can continue with painting our white glow uh, trying to cover up the fingerprints that we just made because we forgot to drill out our gun barrel. As a side note, we don't want to just put the glow at the middle of the light source, but we also want to paint a little bit of white around that to show that the glow is spreading out from its central source. Once our white paint is dry, and if you're using the same white ink that I'm using, you're going to want to make sure it is fully dry before applying any more colors on top of it. We're going to take our pink ink and we're going to apply it over all of the parts that are glowing. You can also even add a little bit more pink ink to the side of the base beneath the gun hose as we might expect the pink light to be reflected there and we want to maybe make it a little bit brighter than what we did with our airbrush. We're also going to want to paint a little bit further outside of even the white glow to show that the, the pink glow is spreading out from the point of origin to about where you would expect it to. While I was painting this, I was also referencing lots of pictures of neon lights, especially pink lights, to see how they behave. So you might want to do that to see just how much glow you want to add. To finish up, I'm also going to add a wash of Drukei Violet to a lot of the parts of the models that are currently not being hit by the pink light 
to contrast the bright pink a little bit. This is going to give those parts of the metallic that aren't being hit by the pink light a little bit more of a muted tone and just help balance everything out. At this point, I think you could call the model complete if you wanted to, especially if you were painting a whole bunch of these and you don't want to spend way too much time on each of them. From this point forward, I'm just going to show you a few optional effects that we could add on top of our finished model to create some different effects or refinements. In this step, I'm going to show you how to add an optional turquoise glow to contrast the pink glow on the other side of the model. Using some turquoise ink, we are going to want to selectively glaze on some highlights to the uppermost right side of the model to show that blue light might be shining onto the model from above and to one side. This is also a great opportunity to add a little bit of blue glow to our base to accent the pink light on the opposite side of the base. And if our base happens to have some little vents or holes in it like this one does, we might also add some blue glow to those as well to make it look like there's some weird future lights coming out of those holes. Another optional thing we can do if we want to is add a little bit of Cassandora yellow wash to our pink ink to add a little bit of variation in our neon glow. When looking at actual pictures of neon lights that are mostly pink and red, I noticed that a lot of the glow within the neon and even around it has much more variation in color than just pink. Often there were some orange and red hues as well, so that is what I'm trying to achieve here. We're going to want to keep this effect fairly subtle and just apply a little bit to some of the regions, maybe not even all of the regions that we have with our pink ink. And after we're done doing that, we might reapply some white ink around those areas to heighten them back up to make them a little bit more intense, and then reapply our pink ink again on top of that to sort of blend everything together. Depending on how much time you want to put into your OSL effect, you could spend a long time adding more layers of white ink, adding washes on top of that with different colors. You could really spend a lot of time on this if you want to, but for me, I usually just do about two rounds of this. So the white, pink, uh, the Cassandra yellow, another, sh another shot of white, and then a final uh, pink wash on top of that. You can see here I'm doing the same thing with our oppositional blue glow. I'm adding little bits of white and then adding a little bit of our turquoise ink on top of that to sort of blend it out a little bit. To finish up, we're gonna paint the rims of our bases in black and then we're done. Here is one of the final models we came up with using this scheme. I'm pretty happy with it, even though it's a little bit different than our initial test model. Keep in mind that these techniques will work with any other color as well, so if you wanted to, you could easily use this method to create any number of different Necron schemes. I hope you enjoyed my Necron tutorial, and I hope you get some use out of these techniques, whether it's for Necrons or other models in your hobby. If you like this paint guide and you want to see more like it, you can click the subscribe button down below for more Necron content in the future. Before we go, I'd like to thank all of my patrons for donating very generously in order to allow me to quit my job and make these videos full time. I'd especially like to thank Sarah Maher, Bill Cowan, Rum Patrol, Money Penny, and Christopher Skelton for pledging above and beyond what they need to pledge just to help fund these videos. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much. If you'd like to see your name up here, or you'd like to get access to bonus content, or you'd just like to help fund the ability for me to make these videos every single week, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash Dana Howell. Or if you'd like to follow my daily painting progress, you can do so by following me on Twitter or Instagram at Dana underscore Howell. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.